Hello, this is Anurag Ray from PaceRemovalWarrior.com and today I am going to talk about something that many people, lot of people ask that is how dangerous are bats. Bats can be dangerous, really dangerous to humans. They can transfer diseases like rabies, SARS virus, like severe acute respiratory syndrome virus and Hendra virus which is also very dangerous. I am going to talk about this uh, about in details later on this video. Bats usually doesn't attack humans directly unless you are going into their layer where they are where they are sleep, they, if you disturb them, where they where they take their rest, where they sleep, bat can sleep in their bat cave, whatever the people call it, bat cave, or where the mainly the layer where under rocky cave or in branches of trees. But if you go near them, try to distract them, that's the time when they can attack you. And a bite from a infected bat can be very dangerous because it will transfer disease to you. If you are bitten by or scratched by bat then immediately go and get yourself treated because you may not know whether that has rabies or not. So that can become a potential problem. Normally that doesn't attack you and if you on certain times there are um, bats that enters your house and try to make their home inside your house. At that time approach them very carefully because you don't want to get scratched or get bitten by these bats. Be careful, carefully capture them or use uh, the help of professionals to, to get rid of the bats from your house. You don't want to capture them by your bare hand because then things can get complicated and you don't want to get attacked by rabies so you don't do that. So now coming back to the point, Hendra virus which is also a very dangerous virus. This, uh, this virus gets to, to the human body from your pet domestic animals. Let's say for example you have a horse and horse ends up eating, uh, ends up eating a food that has been previously eaten by a bat which is infected. And from the body fluids of that horse it can get inside you. And if that happens, that immediately get yourself treated. If, if you feel something uncomfortable within your body, immediately go it and yourself treated. Bat can also transfer leptospirosis, which is also a very dangerous. This thing is also transferred through bodily fluids, mainly through the urine. And mainly the place people who are exposed are like miners, who are meat workers. This kind of people are, are the one who are exposed. And if it gets inside your body, you will have various kinds of symptoms. And if it is not treated on time, it can become very fatal. So these are, these, these are just two of the examples that I have given. There are other diseases that a bat can carry and some of them can be very dangerous. But the chances of infection is very less uh, because only hardly a few percentage not of the bats are infected with rabies and infected with this kind of diseases. And those bats and the chances of getting exposed to those bats are really less. Uh, so the threat is not that much but if it gets infected then the problems can go so bat can be dangerous depends upon how you are interacting with the bat that is if you are in the area where you can you have to face where you see most of the bats or if your animal or your pet animal uh, is going or your domestic animal is going to a place where there are too many bats then it is better to get it that you you get yourself as well as your pet treated because you don't know maybe some of them can be infected is very difficult to spot so make sure that you are not bitten not scratched which are the obvious reason that can transfer apart from that the other unseen thing are your pet animals are your domestic animals so get them also treated it is a very important task if they are face if you are seeing bats on a regular basis some people also have a misconceptions about bats like bats are like vampires they will attack human and suck your blood that's not true that doesn't happen they just don't attack people on number they would everyone is scared and they don't want to attack you unless they are threatened and they don't suck your blood not all of the not all of the uh, bats are like uh, vampire bat there are some bats that actually suck bloods but from mainly from the animals it doesn't actually attack humans but normally the bats that you see flying over are not the bat that's going to suck your blood so you can be very safe around them they are not going to bite, at least this conception is completely wrong that they are going to bite you and suck your blood that doesn't happen but don't threaten them anyway because those bats can also be dangerous if they are provoked and can bite you and that can cause you to have diseases. If you are bitten by any way, if, even if they have disease or even if you don't feel any discomfort apart from the bite, they get yourself treated because they are the wild bats, wild animals and they can be have different kind of problems. They can be, your body can react differently to their bite and scratch. So it's very important to take this first few steps that I am mentioning once again. That is. If you are bitten or scratched, don't forget to get yourself treated. Second thing is don't forget to check your animal, uh, get your t animal tested, if, especially if they are going to all those places where there are too many bats. And if you are going to all of those places where there are too many, get yourself treated. These two ways 
or can actually save your life if you are going around bats all the time, if you are seeing bats all the time. There are big bats also like flying fox bat. They are very big in size. They normally eat fruits. They are not going to attack you and eat your blood. But definitely if you provoke them, they will attack you and can they and can the, and their bite can pack a punch. So don't provoke them. N not any kind of bats, not any kind of animal. Do not provoke them to attack you. That can become fatal to some different kind of extents. Bats also have some good sides to them. It's not just all bad about them. They actually kill many insects that we, are, we do not uh, and maintain a balance in the ecosystem. They kill all kind of nice, nice insects, maybe different kind of pests, uh, small snakes. Then, then there are insects, different kinds of insects, all sort of insects, mouse, every kind of different pests that are around them. Without them, their number can very greatly increase. But if they are in, inside your house, they are infecting your house in, and they are infesting your house, then the problem occurs and it increases many fold because your house will be full of the bat urine. They can also transfer various kinds of diseases like mentioned before. And also if they are carrier of various kinds of viruses and bacteria. So you don't want the bat in your home. If you find them, just call a professional and just get rid of them from your house. Do not, you do not need to kill them. Just allow them to uh, keep your windows open and just allow them to go out from their window by just scaring them and just going, going away from, their, from your home. You should stop the infestation immediately in the first place because don't want too many bats to come to your house and then once the number increases then you take steps to get rid of them that is not a proper way the proper way will be when you see few bats say two three bats entering your house and then stays there throughout the morning and then throughout the morning or whenever you're going to that place that's the time you should immediately get get the bat out of that area because the more bat you allow the more bat will come so it's very important to remove the infestation in the first place only along with that if the bat is infesting a particular room, then you won't be able to go to that room because they will start flying and you do not want to get hit by their wings because it can be pretty sharp and you can also start bleeding. Because the number of bats attacking you, it can create a massive kind of problem. They don't want to get, they doesn't usually bite, but they can bite, that's the thing. And if you, if they attack, if they are flying in numbers and some of them hits you, it will go into hard, it is going to hurt you pretty bad because they can fly pretty fast. It happened with me a couple of times there when the bats has entered my house. And it becomes very difficult to actually get rid of them once it enters your house. Uh, the most common thing that I did was at that time was uh, I actually turned off all of the lights and only the lights that were outside of my house were turned on. And the bat eventually, I, we left the room so the bat can go away from that place. And then the bat eventually went out of the room. The thing is it took 30 minutes approximately for the bat to go away from our house. Uh, it can also happen that the bat can settle down and then can sit in a particular place and then once you get in, it can start flying again. So you don't want that to happen. So the best way that you can do is provoke the bat and then if there is only one bat, this is a remedy that you can use one or two bats, not with multiple bats because then if one or two bats are in your house, then you can just provoke them, make them flying and then turn off the lights and get away from that. They will keep flying and of course don't forget to turn off the fans of course and then they will just keep on flying and then eventually they will go out from your house. That works pretty well, but doesn't not against huge number, just one or two or maybe three, that's all. So that's it for this video. If you really like this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'm uploading two videos every single week that is on Monday and Friday. So if you really like this video, then don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you can receive those updates about those videos when it is uploaded.